Salutations respected viewers, uh, I'm George from Ireland. So this video is about Naga Munchetti and BBC bias. Uh, in case you don't know, Naga Munchetti is a BBC journalist. She's been there for quite some time, at least a dozen years. So she's quite a distinguished journalist, uh, commentator on uh, political affair, affairs, other issues, <clears throat> and that's that. So I don't think anyone <clears throat> doubts her journalistic ability. Um, and as I said, had very uh, had a very glittering career. Um, so she is a woman who's of South Asian um, ethnic origin. Why do I bring that up? Well, it is germane, and she herself um, brought this up uh, not long ago on air, <clears throat> and that was in in a controversial way. Otherwise, her ethnicity would be neither here or there to me. She's a British citizen, always lived in the United Kingdom. She has the absolute right to live in the UK. No reasonable person. <clears throat> would doubt that that I'm not sure which country it was that her ancestors uh, originated in. It might have been her grandparents, great grandparents. It do doesn't really matter. But um, she was in the United States covering President Donald Trump, and um, <clears throat> she <clears throat> deprecated him. She castigated him for his racist rhetoric. Now she then made disobliging references about him and uh, said that uh, she knows how it is as a woman of color and she's experienced. Um, these um, spiteful, barbed remarks, bigoted comments telling her to go back home, like in the United Kingdom, people denying her right to, to reside in the United Kingdom and all the rest of it. So now, no unbiased person would dispute that Trump is racist. Um, and uh, indeed, he has um, received warm appreciation from the Ku Klux Klan, from other white supremacist organisations, from neo-Nazis who, who've chanted... Um, um, Heil Hitler at his rallies. It's it's not been one or two. It's not been on only a single occasion. It's been going on for several years since um, <clears throat> as soon as he declared um, that he was seeking the Republican <clears throat> nomination. And so appeal to white nationalism and frankly white supremacy is certainly part of his pitch. I don't think he can dispute that. Stoking up um, animus towards ethnic minority people in the United States, towards um, other nationalities, particularly nationalities where most people are not white, however you define white, it's, it's dubious. That's certainly part of his pitch. And he, he appeals to um, uh, those who hate people of other races, whites who detest other, those of other races. So um, Naga Munchetti, she was slapped down by the BBC um, pursuant to a complaint. Well, a few viewers wrote in and said, this is unacceptable. She's overstepped the bounds of journalistic propriety. And the Broadcasting Act in the United Kingdom requires the British Broadcasting Corporation and other um, uh, television, ch television channels and radio stations to show um, fairness and balance, to report um, the news with impartiality and not to act as cheerleaders for one side or the other and not to be unduly condemnatory of, of one side or the other. That's why, for instance, in reporting the Jammu and Kashmir dispute, um, the BBC would say, Indian-controlled Kashmir, Pakistani-controlled Kashmir, not just Indian Kashmir or Jammu and Kashmir or the illegally occupied bit of Jammu and Kashmir and blah, 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 or reporting various Palestinian fighters are fighting against Israel, calling them militants or something, or radicals, not calling them terrorists as the Israeli government wants them to. With regard to Northern Ireland, referring to a certain city as Londonderry and sometimes Derry, interspersing the two, about equally, things like that. Sometimes I slightly come off the fence and say, call cool, that the loyalist terrorists in Northern Ireland really were terrorists, and they were. You can't, don't think you can logically argue that they weren't, and likewise, Republican terrorists in Northern Ireland, that they were terrorists. I know some people who will dispute that. And this is the tricky thing with um, Miss Munchetti when we come into when is something a fact and when something is an opinion, and there's a, there's a bit of a, a cross over there, there's a blur. OK, um, even if something is demonstrably true, some who will deny it, even if it's been proved to be absolutely certain. You know, the flat earthers. Um, I'm not sure the people who claim that devolution never happened or that climate change is not going on or that um, Hillary Clinton received millions of votes from illegal immigrants or things like that. So there are all sorts of kooks out there. And just because a considerable number of people believe things, if it's clearly wrong, provably wrong, then I suppose we don't need to have any truck with that. Um, so uh, the BBC um, 
authorities. They criticised her, said that was out of order. She shouldn't have um, opined and given her personal take on things and she shouldn't have come off the fence and uh, gone out of her way to excoriate Donald, Donald J. Trump. Anyone who watches my channel will know that I was a day one abominator of Donald J. Trump. And I, I, I recognise the menace that he represented to the United States, to the wider world, that uh, really, really is despicable. And um, I rack my brains for a single positive thing to say about him. Um, he's uh, utterly rebarbative. His, his whole career has been a bloke wheel. And um, he's just really a fraud from the first to the last. Uh, he's um, a charlatan. Hello, Diane. And the, the, the uh, harm he's done is of the first order of magnitude. But anyway, and then the BBC um, retracted this somewhat because it provoked this furious outcry. People springing to the defence of Naga Munchetti saying, um, no, it's wrong. She ought to be given free reign to voice her opinions and uh, to uh, call out Donald Trump to denounce him for the vile fiend that he is. And it was all very um, self-righteous and couched in um, this language of indignation. Um, and then the BBC re released a statement saying, racism is not an opinion, racism is racism. And I thought, well, what drivel? These are PC pieties um, posing as profundities. These are truisms. It really sticks in the craw. A bit like racism is racism. Wow, will knock me down with a feather. An egg is an egg. Yes is yes. A squirrel is a squirrel. Tuesday is Tuesday. Wow, I'm astonished. That was a really tough, uncompromising stance you took there. Uh, racism is racism. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, it is also an opinion. There's no contradiction there. Now, it's a loathsome opinion, but that doesn't mean it's not an opinion. There are those who claim that it's acceptable for a family to murder a woman who has a romantic liaison they don't approve of. Yeah, that's an opinion. It's an absolutely sick one. It's grossly immoral, but it's still an opinion. Uh, that doesn't mean we'd have to show the least bit of respect. Um, so don't say an opinion isn't one. I mean, you could call it an attitude or something. Um, anyway, I mean, there are some, say, um, uh, pro-Trump uh, professional liars like Stephen Crowder, uh, who've had the impudence to claim that Trump is not racist, despite an absolute mountain of evidence to the contrary. So, um, really, there's some people who will never be convinced by proof, no matter how, how absolutely indisputable and overwhelming. If their head is buried that far in the sand, if they're that deeply invested in maintaining the big lie, they can never be swayed. Um, so there you see that someone, when their, their belief is disconfirmed, they will simply persist in it because to acknowledge that they've been dead wrong would be too much of a humiliation. They lack the humility, in a sense, to, and they lack the, the moral courage to face up and say, you know what, I've been had, I got it wrong. So the thing is, what is an opinion? Well, um, an opinion is a belief which um, can't be proven with absolute certainty and might be actually quite far from certainty. Um, so oh, it's, it's difficult to say. I'm trying to give some examples. Monarchy is good. I believe that. You might disagree. Now, I can't prove for sure that it's good. Actually, I might be wrong. And uh, you could be an intelligent and a rational person and arrive at the opposite conclusion that it's bad. So to some extent, it's a matter of taste. Um, or uh, let me see, what else might I say? Oh, jazz music is annoying. That's a matter, a matter of opinion. Or perhaps, you know, again, it's in like a cultural taste. That's a little bit different. Or um, I'm not talking about predictions now. Got to stick to opinions. Um, uh, beauty pageants are degrading to women. That's an opinion. As it happened, I don't share it. But people could um, construct a rational case for that. It, it wouldn't uh, convince me. But um, I, I could perceive that there's an argument there. Um, so, so that's what it is. So um, however despicable racism is and all that, it's still an opinion and or an attitude. These words, they overlap in their signification. Um, <clears throat> so you might be applauding what Naga Munchetti had said. And actually, I share her sentiments. Perhaps I shouldn't even say that. Because the case here is to say the BBC journalists 
they shouldn't go beyond their remit. They shouldn't step out aside what the Broadcasting Act permits them to do. And they shouldn't go into bat for one side or other in a political dispute. The feeling, the feeling is running, running high. That makes um, emotional detachment in reportage all the more crucial. So you've got to ask yourself, what if somebody had intervened on the other side? And I'm presuming most of my um, viewership presumably uh, sympathise with the uh, opinions that were voiced by Miss Manchetti. Um, supposing someone had said, and it's foul that anyone should um, have the temerity to accuse Donald Trump of racism because he's morally upstanding, there's not a racist bone in his body, and he's done so much for ethnic minority people. And as an ethnic minority person, I know what it is, how wonderful it is to have a white saviour who's speaking up for me, the forgotten ethnic minorities. Okay, if, if someone had said something like that, now that might really get your goat. Um, and um, even if you agreed with them, you might perceive that actually there's something very wrong about that because this journalist is um, actually getting down and dirty in the, in the political d debate and no longer simply reporting things. So the BBC, what they quite often do is say, well, this side say this and this side say the other. Now, the BBC doesn't always have to come right down in the middle. Sometimes something is an outright lie or whatever, so they can say that. Uh, I'm trying to say, say whatever. I mean, if we're talking about, say, Syria, where there's um, ample proof that uh, President Bashir al-Assad's forces have used chemical weapons on multiple occasions and uh, deliberately killed thousands of Syrian civilians. It, it was not biased to tell the plain truth about that. Um, now, however vehemently, um, his side will deny that. So I don't want to hear vociferation for one side or the other about an opinion, about is this praiseworthy? Or is it loathsome or whatever, uh, a, partic a particular policy? But whether something happened or not is different. Sometimes we can't be sure. So the BBC is often accused of liberal left bias, and Miss Manchetti is really just um, uh, providing yet more uh, evidence that there is a liberal left bias there. It's, it's grist to the mill of those who um, uh, detest the BBC. Now, I'm fairly critical of the BBC, but I recognise it's got... Um, plenty of superb journalists, people are completely dedicated to public service, to uh, informing the public, uh, educating the public and so forth, and they produce many marvellous news programmes, political discussion shows, cultural programmes, things that the market wouldn't necessarily um, support. It's not just bums on seats, they're not just pumping out pap. This is, as a, well, not really art, but ars gratia artis, I don't know how you'd say news. Um, uh, so the BBC is not there to evangelise. The way it works in the United Kingdom is if you want a television, you must get a television licence. And that money goes to support the BBC, something of the order of £150 per annum. Now, what if you never switch on BBC television or radio? You still have to pay. That's the way it was set up. The BBC in the United Kingdom doesn't have adverts. BBC abroad does. Opinion and plain facts are vastly different, of course. Still people latch on to an opinion as fact. Yes, Diane, I mean, this is one thing where it's, it's difficult to argue. Is Trump racist or not? I would say he is. I think it's very difficult to argue that he's not, but some people would still try it. I'm just trying to think um, what else we could argue about. that. Okay, that, um, you know, vaccines can protect people from illnesses. Now there's an anti-vaxxer community, community. The science on this is absolutely crystal clear that it does uh, uh, protect us from diseases. Um, but some people will say that it doesn't. Or does HIV turn into AIDS? Yes, it does. You can act, ask any doctor you want. I mean, I've never heard of a doctor who says the opposite, but there's still some people like Tabo and Becky who said that wasn't true or something like that. Um, or, you know, did the Holocaust occur? Yes, it most certainly did. But you'll still find more than a few people who say that it didn't. Um, so is that an opinion or is it a fact? Well, it is a fact, even though there's a very noisy group of people who will deny what is the plain truth. Um, anyway, so the role of the BBC is not to evangelise, and I've heard this said by various people that some people join the BBC because they think they want to take on the uh, petty-minded prejudices of uh, Middle Britain. But um, there's a well-worn path of uh, BBC journalists becoming uh, Labour politicians or Liberal Democrat politicians. Tony Benn, the Tribune of the ultra-left in the British Parliament, 
uh, Dr. Gordon Brown, Labour Prime Minister, Ben Bradshaw, there must be there must be quite a few more. Their names um, escape me now. Um, or there was Orla Guerin who stood for the Irish Labour Party, didn't get in actually to be for the European Parliament. Charles Kennedy, a Liberal Democrat. Now the thing is, you could have these opinions and still do your job entirely honourably and um, not allow your uh, personal preferences to interfere with what they're saying, to report it in a, in a neutral manner, be like a judge. Because people have opinions, particularly intelligent people, those are politically engaged, who are exposed to all sorts of information, those are highly informed. Yeah, they're likely to form an opinion one way or the other, and they mightn't go that far, they mightn't be that, that sure. It gets to the case, that, it gets to the situation that the more I know, the less sure I am, sort of information overload. And people who only have a little bit of information, the ignorant, are often actually people very much one way or the other. Is the BBC license for your hump something to keep or keep? Would you like it repealed? Asks Jonathan. Well, that is a um, scintillating question. Now, the libertarian in me says, well, if you want to watch telly, you just do it. And the government shouldn't you demand you pay this. This sort of flat taxes that works are aggressive. It hits low income people much more than high income people. By the way, pensioners are exempt. Um, it's fairly easy to avoid paying the licence fee if you simply get a telly and just don't pay, and then you're warned they're coming to inspect you, you could avoid it. Hello there, straight white British Protestant. I'm, I'm well, getting over my laryngitis. So um, we could do that. The BBC could still exist, but we'd have to advertise as well. And the trouble is then we just like more or less every other channel. So the BBC often tries to make programmes that wouldn't otherwise be made by profit-driven channels. The trouble is the BBC does a lot of light entertainment. If it's sheer numbers, why don't you just leave it to the market? There are lots of other channels that do that. Worthy programmes are not that popular. Hello, Leslie, you're from South Africa. Thank you so much. You think I'm well clued up. And my grasp of the English language, well, it is not abysmal. Yes. Um, so what uh, Naga did is, is not a hanging offence. I certainly don't want her career to be terminated by this, but people who do bad things, they really get their bum smacked, like... Um, um, Margaret Thatcher's daughter, Carol, she was in the green room in the BBC. This is like 10 years ago more. That's just before you came and come on. And she used a non-PC word. It's, it's a demeaning word for black people. So it wasn't recorded. It wasn't broadcast. But I think she wasn't allowed to do a show again. Now, people shouldn't use distasteful words. But I don't think that should be the end of her career there. She could apologise or something like that. Most people have done foolish things. I've certainly done silly things, things I regret, which upset other people. But we ought to have some sort of um, tolerance and forgiveness. Is there to be no absolution for misjudgments or even things which are nasty or spiteful? I think what she did was, was Naga Munchetti did, was quite small, OK? Take her off and let her carry on. If she did it persistently, there were a different matter. Cancel culture is just sad. We have all made mistakes. Well, one thing about Boris Johnson is he's all this Teflon quality. He seems to get away with well-nigh anything. Things he've said would would have sunk many people. It just would have would have been curtains for anybody else's career, like um when he wrote several years ago about pickaninnies in the newspaper and watermelon grins of African chiefs or I can't think whatever the natives coming out to meet the great white queen. Or what else has he said? Um, well this is going back to about two thousand and six that he was against same sex civil partnerships, not marriages, even civil partnerships. If two men can get married, why why shouldn't three men get married? Or, for that matter, three men and a dog. And it was used in a Ken Livingston leaflet, a Labour leaflet, to show Bojo as being anti-gay. But he's since eaten his words. And he was a climate change denier. You go back to about 2006. But he changed his tune and he still got elected mayor of London in 2008. So, um, most people have changed their mind. Um, it'd be odd if you hadn't. Wouldn't, not wrong to be odd. But, uh... Are your opinions now, whatever your age, exactly they were when you first formed opinions? Well, presumably you just par parroted what your parents said. Now, who was it? Was it, I think it was John Stuart Mill said, when the facts change, I change my mind. Or when I realise I'm wrong, I change my mind. It may be hard to believe, but I've been wrong. And more than once. Um, so I've changed my mind on, say, the legalisation of drugs, for instance. Um, anyway, so the BBC is there is not to win people over for one point of view or the other. Now, um, we need to obviously calm down and stop moralising so much. And I know racism is um, deeply unpalatable. And it is immoral. And it affects people. The BBC, though, is, is not to preach, to push a certain line. People say, oh, you're just trying to advance a liberal left agenda. In some ways, that, that you could think that was uh, something laudable. 
But um, some people think that the, uh, the anti-racist mission is so imperative that the BBC can throw aside its other uh, ethical standards. Hello from Gig Harbour, Washington. Do you have a brogue? Can't detect it. No, I don't have an Irish accent. I have very strong beliefs loosely held because they're evidence-based. Well done. Uh, that reminds me, who said it? Was it Lawrence of Arabia or someone else? Oh, no, it was A.G.P. Taylor. They say you have very strong views as being dressed down by a senior Oxford Don. He said, um, uh, you, you hold very strong views. He said, well, I have strong views, but they're likely held because I could be wrong. It makes me call to mind what Bertrand Russell said. Said, um, the trouble is, is that wise people were always so uncertain and moderate. that The fools and fanatics are always so sure of themselves and they follow a certain... Um, uh, viewpoint right to its logical, you know, vanishing point. Yeah, this is um, being categorical. This is logical absolutism. I believe in whatever it is, libertarianism. So I'm going to go all the way off the chart. Or authoritarianism. So I'll go all the way this way. A health and safety. So I must do absolutely anything to minimize any chance of accidents. For instance, or I think crime is bad. So it will be like some place like Texas are where a guy was sentenced to 16 years in prison for stealing a calculator. You heard that right. One six years in prison for stealing a calculator. Tough on crime. Whoa. Now, come on. Should have done more forgiveness? If it was a first-time offence, I'd give him a warning, a fine, then community service. If he's persistent, all right, then finally, reluctantly, a short prison sentence. But that's grossly, grossly unjust. So anyway, I was just saying, some people in the BBC... They um, think um, they are doing um, something that's like kind of like the Lord's work. They have this religious zeal. They have this frightening fanaticism and certitude in their own rectitude. So therefore, they believe that they can throw out any notion of even handedness of objectivity because anything they do in furtherance of the anti-racist cause is ipso facto justified. The ends justify the means. And I think they've gone a little, a little bit wrong here. And um, there are some there are some good intentions behind it. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. I think that's William Blake. So there we are, Naga Munchetti. Um, so she was a bit of a martyr for uh, the anti-racist cause. I mean, what did she suffer? Um, she got uh, suffered a mild reprimand. That was it. Hasn't put a damper on her career. Actually, may have turned out even to be a boost for putting her head above the parapet and being fearless. Come on, she didn't risk anything. Um, and so uh, I um, have hated Donald Trump since, uh, well, goodness, since I knew he had any political views. He's really um, an odorous, sorry, odious fiend and a fool, and I'd very much like to see the back of him. But uh, BBC journalists still shouldn't um, take up cudgels for one side or the other, all right? They're meant to be commentators. They're not supposed to be actually playing the sport. All right, that's enough from me. Please support me on um, uh, PayPal or Patreon. Thank you very much for the donations you've been giving. I really need those to maintain the channel. Wouldn't it be an awful pity if I shut this down? So please suggest any videos you'd like to see me make. I teach people lessons online in history, geography, English literature, English as a foreign language. Um, I think law, just introductory courses, taster courses religious studies, um, really any humanity subjects, French up to 16, at the age of 16, I need to